in the previous step it got cut so we're cutting we are we're continuing from uh, minute number 24 so that we have been given by Lord God the Holy Ghost a record in the Old Testament emphasizing about this man and this man what he goes on to give for us he teaches for us that Satan and the things pertaining to Satan they have to look and realize if you have been in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit what best it could happen so here in Daniel chapter 5 we have a man that's what the mother of Belshazzar says so she says to him there is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods and in the days of thy father he has having light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father the king I say thy father made master of all the magicians astrologers Chaldeans and soothsayers you know the unbelievers are noticing if the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit could operate in you that means you're no longer having the influence of flesh so you're totally free from the power of the flesh, from the power of the old sin nature, but now you have been completely subdued or you have been completely in the realm of the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost operating in you. So when you have been there in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit, even in the Old Testament, if this has been recorded for a man, then how much more it ought to be in the New Testament? Then how much more your presence should make Satan to tremble? If you have been alive as a church age believer in the church age, Satan shall know very well that your presence on this earth will be a terrifying act. It will be a very, very dangerous act. Because the power given to you by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is something great. It's something unique. And much of the people today, they don't understand. If three times a day a man was been knelt and prayed before the presence of Lord God the Father, and Lord God the Father compares that man before Satan's challenging go governor or Nagid, and he says to him, Can you be wiser than Daniel? Then how much more today we have to be wiser than Satan? By trampling down Satan under our feet only when we are in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, how much more we ought to be? The only problem is you are not in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. The only problem is you're not able to realize the power given to you in this church age. The only problem with you all is that you're still operating like anti-Christians, but you're not walking like Christ-like Christians in this church age. The only problem is that you're still not able to realize the marvelous wonders of His glory. Dear brethren, life is too short to spend our time in vanity. Realize once again the things which we are stating for you. You are establishing your life like vanity. Therefore, he said in Daniel chapter 5, What is that excellent spirit what has been given? He said, For as an excellent spirit, the authority-oriented spirit in a renovated head. So what does it happen? It goes to give you the standards of making all the days of this life like kebel. The word kebel has been translated for us over here as for as much. But the word says over here kebel followed by Call for as much should be actually translated first word kebel, the strong code number 6903, and then as much as it has been said for 3603 code as call. So kebel call, this is the point which says kebel call. So the first word kebel, what does it meant to say? The pictographical representation meant to say, dear brethren, from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, no matter whatever may be, your body is been designed only to be a disciple. That's the word for as much. That's what your body is been prepared to be the Lord God, the Holy Ghost temple residing in you. Your your body is no longer your own, but you have been brought up with a great price. Therefore, the reality for us over here, what we look in simple terms, he says that it has to be Kebel. And then Kebel went to say, from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, no matter whatever it is, your body is been called to be a disciple oriented. If not, the words for as much don't give you the meaning at all. Kebel. And then the word goes further to say about the point called to be call. 
And what is that call? The work of your body is first to join as a disciple and then reach the maturity level of status quo called to be the grammateers and then in return go and make disciples of all the nations. That's what the point over here it meant to say. Kebel call. The purpose of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit has a throne to be established in you. As we are taking that point from Isaiah chapter 16 in verse number 5. So what does he say over here in Isaiah chapter 16 in verse number 5? He emphasizes the point for us saying that the very first throne what has been given for you is called to be Kasai. And what is that Kasai? You have been told to establish like a grammateers. Under any pressure you have to have a thinking like grammateers. If you are not growing up to become like a grammateers and grammateers are the people who write the word of Lord God. And why you need to write the word of Lord God to diligently search every scripture if you really love my lord and savior jesus christ he said in john chapter 5 that you will search the scriptures without searching the scriptures you cannot love my lord that's the very simple point which has been wasted today in our pulpits people are not able to realize that People will say we love the Lord, people will say we love Christ, people will say we love this, we love that, but you're not at all loving the Lord God. If you're loving the Lord God, His word should abide in you. And if His word should abide in you, then you should diligently search the scriptures. And that's what the real bona fide work of the pastor teachers is all about, to preach the word, preach the word, preach the word, being well prepared in season, out of season. And that's the reason why we have Christmas for us in Jeremiah 23 verses 5 and 6. His righteous branch will come. Why? Because he's going to send his shepherds after his own heart. And why he has to send his shepherds after his own heart? As we read in Psalm 68, 11, Great is the company of them that published his word, because Adonai gave his word. And what is that word we need to publish? You are a living example of his word. Therefore, your presence on this earth will cause Satan to tremble. Every believer has been given this power because he has been given greater one who is indwelling in them, the mentoring minister of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. He has been indwelled by Lord God, the Son. He has also been indwelled by Lord God, the Father in heaven. John 14, 23 and following, we look upon the passages. So when the creator is there, what is the work of creation? You're fearing creation rather than creator. You know why? Because you're being made creation, but you're not able to look and to re realize and to utilize the power of a creator to be well established in you. That's where we fail. You're not operating like a creator. The problem with us is you're not able to look the power of creator to operate in you. But you have been still influenced by your roles in nature. You have been still walking in the humanity of your flesh. And that makes you to walk like aliens, strange ones, to be alienated from the life of God. If you have been there in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you would learn only one thing. This one thing, O oh Lord, I desire. And what is that one thing? To behold the beauty of you. To behold and to inquire in your temple every day your pale wonders of your truth. That's what we are failing today. We are not able to inquire. We are not able to behold His beauty in His temple. Rather than making our body to be the anointed ones of the Lord God as disciples, you are not even known what is the true meaning of a Christian. Your throne has to be established like a scribe. If not, you will not understand this great word which have been recorded for us over here. In Daniel chapter 5, in verse number 12, for as much, and the word for as much we have been looking over here, it emphasizes, Kebel, call. The word Kebel is nothing but your brethren from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. Your body has been born to be a disciple to the Lord's mind. And the word call over here, which has been translated as much as for well, the strong code number 3606 meant to say you have been given your body to grow up into grammatias so that now your body should produce the works of the Lord God. The energy given to your body is to go and make disciples as grammatias has grown up in the Lord. That's what the point is. Kebel call. And that's why your body has been designed. That's the reason why Lord God, the Holy Ghost, resides in your body. The problem is your body is not yet been molded. You're still the raw material out of the coal as you can get diamond. So the body is not being able to become diamond from the coal. You know why? Because you're not able to carry a cross every day. You're not able to become the will of Lord God, the Father, every day. You're not able to become the grammatias every day to Christ. And that's a great pain what we're facing today. Every day. 
The coal has to become the standards of what we call diamond. But how he says over there in Isaiah chapter 40, 18, verse number 10 through 12, by the fire of affliction. You have been refined in affliction. You have been not refined by silver, but you have been put into the furnace of affliction. The word furnace, kur, we read the word. What it is? It is called to be grammatias oriented your life. You are going to put into the affliction of the grammatias so that you can go back and get back to make up your life well designed to the grammatical work. Like the scribal work, that's what you have been called to be before the foundation of the world. Your names have been recorded in the book of life for the very purpose to be like a sofer, like a scribe. And are still trying to live a life to operate in the realm of the creator or creation or been fearing Satan. But he says, if you have been still present in this earth, as long as your breath in your nostrils, every believer is a great threat to Satan. The problem is you have put off, you haven't put off the old man and put on the new man. The old man to illustrate many things for us in the Bible. Put off Adam, put on Christ, the last Adam. Take out Saul, well established to be with David. Take out your anti-Christmas, put upon the real Christmas. That's where you have to be, that's where you have to grow up, that's where you have to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When you put on the new man, when you put off the old man, the presence of the new man in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, should make Satan to tremble. You are a threat. Because the power given to you to be involved by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is not just a gimmick. When He controls you, He guides into all truth. Why? You have to know the truth. <coughs> and that excellency of the Spirit, why it has been given for you. The excellency of the Spirit which has been given for you is for a very simple reason. As the word says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, your body should be associated in making disciples. That's the word called to be as, for as much. And what does it mean to say? Kebel, Q-E-B-E-L, Kebel. And the word Kebel, something that is placed in front or it has been chosen. And what is that that has been front or chosen? Therefore, this woman, she gives a witness about Daniel in Daniel 5.12. She says, for as much, something has been given to him that we don't have. And what we have is of a marvelous glory. And the world doesn't understand what we are having today in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The world is still residing in vanity, vanity, vanity. But the word of Lord God says you have something great, you have something unique, you have something marvelous. If you recognize that, you can truly understand the purpose of this Christmas. Because people don't realize what is the real meaning of Christmas without Christ in it. They may just think it's a birthday of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. No. He has been born to save you so that you can serve Lord God without fear all the days of your life. In righteousness and holiness. In the new man. That's what he meant to say in Luke 1, 69-75. Without fear, you have been called to serve Christ. Without fear, you have been called to live the life of the Lord. Without fear, you have been called to enjoy the pale wonders of His glory. Without fear. Because the Savior is born. The Savior is going to save you when you are establishing your throne in truth. The tabernacle of the Lord God resides in you only when you are being in truth. Therefore, we have this great promise for us in Jeremiah chapter 32. Beginning with verse number 30 and following, you have over here, particularly beginning with verse number 40. He said, I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. And therefore, he says the reason why, you know, because they shall be my people and I will be their God. Therefore, Holy One, Holy One, Holy One is Lord God of hosts. We need to praise Him. The tabernacle of the body which has been prepared for us as in front as you look upon for as much Kebel call. 
Your body has been given to be a disciple oriented. Your body has been given to make up into be the grammatures of the will of Lord God the Father. Kebel call. The point for us, what we learn now here is very, very important, dear brethren, because if your body is not disciple oriented, if your body is not able to grow up into grammatures, then the activities of the spirit will not operate in you. That's how she's introducing over here in Daniel 5.12. For as much as been translated in the English, that doesn't match what exactly demands in the Hebrew or the Aramaic, what we have over here in these passages. For as much as from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, your body should be disciple-oriented. Your body should be to the standards of the Lord's mind for as much as so that you should become kebel and then followed by call. If your body is not a disciple oriented, if your body is not grammatis grown up or becoming to be like a scribe, the New Testament scribe grown up, then you will not understand the remaining things, what excellency of the spirit can do in you. The very first thing he said, you have an excellent spirit. A spirit is nothing but the authority over here. The word excellent being translated, it's called to be yate air. You know, that is meant to say extreme surpassing, extraordinary, preeminent. Not the things of the world of this man, like the fowls of the heaven or the beasts of the field. You have something on your body now which is called to be preeminent, which is surpassing, which is extreme, which is extraordinary. Because your body has been designed for that work. But you're spending your time in, like the first Adam, letting go the word of God and running with your woman. You're spending like Saul, letting go to perform the will of Lord God the Father. Therefore, you have been searching for stupid relationships on this earth and then fearing men and disobeying the commandments of the word of Lord God. So these things are very essential. But here he said, surpassing Yati air. The word yati air over here, it meant to say, dear brethren, in authority you talk now in your head. Because your head has been renovated as per the demands of Bible doctrine. Therefore, in authority, according to authoritative standards, you talk. And you don't have anything else to look because you talk in authority. So, excellency comes when you have been able to look upon the demands of preeminence excellency, or the word goes to preach over here, extraordinary. It's not just an ordinary one. We are maybe ordinary believers, but every believer has an extraordinary power of operation of the Spirit in them. Every believer is ordinary but he has in him extraordinary power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. The power to overcome the heathen, the power to overcome Satan, the power to overcome your own death. What is excellence and the wisdom and the knowledge of the world? He says over here in Daniel chapter 5, they couldn't go to interpret the handwriting which had been given upon the wall. Therefore the king was greatly astonished. He was been exceedingly much. And what does it mean to say? He was been greatly troubled. The word troubled over here meant to say, dear brethren, as behel. And the word behel over here, it emphasizes the point which goes to teach, saying that he was frightened, he was alarmed. Why, you know? Because there were no men who could interpret the word, and they cannot interpret the word if they're not disciples. Therefore, he says in Second Peter three fifteen and 16, emphasizing Apostle Paul towards Apostle Peter towards Paul, the teachings and the wisdom given to Apostle Paul is something far and greater. Therefore, they that are not disciples, they that are not having a firm mind to look into the divinity of the word of Lord God or the standards of the word of Lord God, they use other scriptures as well for their own destruction. So be careful. That's what he said. 
So here also, when the king has been greatly troubled, it meant to say there are not enough men who could be to know the interpretation which has been written on the wall. If they would know that, then they should have this excellence of the spirit. And if they should know this excellence of the spirit, then their body should be well prepared to be like a grammatias. And the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, which is surpassing, which is extraordinary, which is something superb, could operate in them. But the problem is, they couldn't know the truth. So, dear brethren, he says over here, the king was, the king Belshazzar greatly troubled and his countenance was changed in him and his lords were astonished. You know why they were astonished? Because they couldn't come to interpret the writing which has been put upon by Lord God with his hand upon the wall. Mine, mine, tikel. So now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the king queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thought trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in the kingdom whom him is the spirit of the holy gods. You know, every believer should have this testimony. That's why I've been called to be born again in Christ. Your body is now called to be well prepared to be the disciples. Your body has been called well prepared to be the place where you can have the power of this excellency of the Spirit to operate in you. So he says, there is a man in, in, the, in the kingdom in whom is the Spirit of the Holy Gods. And in the days of the Father, light and understanding the word light over here is called to be ne'er. And what is that word ne'er? Meant to say to have some reason of vigor and valor in your head. And what does he have? He says understanding. What is that understanding their brother and called to be? Sokleteno. And what is it sokleteno? Or insight the word takes from to shekel. What is it meant to say? It meant to say he has the work of grown up grammatious level and making disciples. That's what his intention is. That's what the intention of every believer should be. Matthew thirteen fifty two, in comparison with Matthew twenty eight eighteen through twenty. That's what you have been called to be a man of understanding. You know, many problems in this life before wife and husband or parents and children or vice versa. So you can understand what? They say they don't have proper light and understanding. But the real understanding with Lord God in his realm of burdened life is nothing but you should have Matthew thirteen fifty two or Matthew twenty eight eighteen through twenty because you have been called to join as disciple, grow up into grammatias. You have been called to go and make disciples of all the nations. That's what you have been called in the church age. That's what it has been said to be in the light of understanding. But today people are not happy in that light of understanding of the wisdom of Bible doctrine. Because they don't know the purpose of your life, what for God the Father has given for you. He has been given for your body to go and make disciples when you have grown up into grammatists. That's what understanding. Sokleteno. Or the word takes from sokel or shakel. Having a thought process to be like a grammatist, having a thought process to become like the word of Lord God, which has been so much essential for us as making disciples of all the nations. That's the word. Sokleteno. And the church is not able to wage this war today in making disciples. They, in fact, indeed, they don't understand what is the word Christian. If you're celebrating Christmas without Christ, it is not Mass. Having no Mass of Christ, that is not a Christmas. In the same way, if you're not having Christ, then you're not a Christian. Without Christ, I am nothing. Then what is Christian? He was a day-by-day day marvelous wonders of his glorious disciples carrying his cross. Then only you are called to be a Christian. If not, Satan is so happy to make it to be afraid, to make it to be tremble, to make it to be sitting and dancing in the presence of all the stupid details of this life. And causing you to have worry, fear. You know why? Because you don't have for as much. As the word goes to say, Kebel call. You don't have that. You don't have the reason of your purpose of becoming disciples. You don't have the reason of knowing and understanding the will of God the Father as disciples. A grown up into grammatias as disciples. You don't have that. 
You don't have cable coal in your body. Therefore, there is no operation of the excellency of the spirit, yate air, which is surpassing, which is something great, which is marvelous. Therefore, this woman, she says about Daniel, and she says, saying that, light and understanding. What understanding? Your life has been associated to build up in such a manner that as grammateers, you need to go and make disciples of all the nations. If not, there is no understanding of you and God on this earth. His thoughts are something great and vast, but if people don't have that understanding of his thoughts, what are your thoughts? What is your life? Your thoughts are not associated to become disciples. Your thoughts are not associated to become grammatists. Your thoughts are not associated to become that which is right and good in the sight of Lord God. And you say you're having understanding. <laughs> In Isaiah 11, we read that passage. In the previous step, it would be what has been given for him. He has a spirit of understanding. And the point over here in Isaiah 11, what does he have? The spirit of understanding. It is called to be as the one who would go to build further or discernment. The word say, bine. And the word bine meant to say what? Your body has been driven by the vigor and valor of the word of Lord God in such a manner that you have been involved all the days of your life in building up that which is accurate or that which is discerned or that which is of the great act of understanding of the Lord's mind. But though I have been given this great spirit for you, you have been grieving and squelching and waxing and lying and resisting Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, you cannot have the witness of a testimony what this queen says about, uh, about Daniel to her king. So she says, the words come to saying that he is a man of light and understanding. He has the understanding power of making disciples. He has the understanding power to live his life worthy to the praise of his glory. And this we are talking about the Old Testament and how much more we have to be now in the New Testament to Christ. That how much marvelous, wonderful of his grace to be established is thrown in truth. Operating all the days of our life in his righteous judgments. How many days more? As he said in Proverbs 6, 9, how long you want to sleep and slumber? You want to copulate with the details of this world and to have your thrill established with the details of your world? You know, Lord God designed a right man to a right woman, but people have come in the book of Romans. When we look, even in the time of Sodomites and Gomorrites, we look. You're trying to get your pleasure by copulating yourselves, even if it is just an idol. By that we meant to say many queens. Because they're not been fed up with the right word of Lord God. If, da if David would have been really having the fear of Lord God and making to do the will of Lord God, there wouldn't have been a time that he would have seen the naked woman Bathsheba and could have gone to commit that great sin, a sin which made Lord God the Father to be displeased. Even though in that, in that place, if there was an idol, idol in the sense a mannequin, a woman, because people get looking into that woman as well, saying that she is a woman, but she is actually an idol. So in the same manner over here, people are getting acquainted to get copulated with such worthless things of life, rather than having a right yashir of relationship with Lord God the Father. So he says, how many days more you want to just sleep, you sluggard? A sluggard are the men who are not having the viewpoint of making disciples. That's what we read yesterday. The sluggards are having a life which is far away from discipleship program. So he says, how many days more you want to be sluggards? How many days more you still want to live a life that which is not worthy to the praise of Lord God's glory? How many days more you want to be sluggards? You know what a sad thing it will be for us to know that you end up as being copulating with the sluggard nature in your life, then where you will get light and understanding, where you will do and or what you will do with the power of the wisdom of Lord God, the Holy Spirit given to us. Where is your light and understanding? 
You know, what does she say? He has in him light and understanding and wisdom, kakma. The kakma is that now he's built up a wall of fortification like a scribe. His every blood talks like a scribe. Why the word scribe has been mentioned? Because these are the ones who have been given by Lord God in Matthew 23, 34 to think like a scribe and to say to master the entire word of Lord God, not just by reading, but by writing it. If needed to rewrite it seven times, that's what the oath of the Lord God could be performed in our life. To make it to appear again seven times. To make it to reappear again seven times and to talk and to do and to perform. That's what the oath of Lord God is all about for us, to perform it. And that's the scribe who writes the word. You just try to imagine your life writing the word of Lord God. If you could take three and a half years to finish your Bible once, then seven times. You know what the time you've been letting out? Seven thrice, 21, followed by again another point of three and a half year. So what do you get? You have 24 and, 24 and a half years of your majority of your life to involve in writing the word of Lord God. If you write to begin Bible from the age 20 by the age of 44.5, you would be something marvelous glory of the Lord. And you know from age number eight, if King Joash could become a king, if you start to write from the age number eight by another 24 years, by the age of 33, if you would calculate approximately 24.5 or 25 years, because seven times if you would write. At a target of 24 verses per day. You know, by the age of 33, it will be something marvelous. You really don't know the power of this word. Your body has been designed to be a grammatist. Your body has been designed through the will of Lord God the Father. And you're really neglecting the, the, the powerful word which has been given for us, being influenced by that word as we look upon in Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh, so he is. Getting into the right train can lead you to a higher station of life. So it happens. That higher, sta higher station of life will give you wisdom will give you understanding, will give you that which is something marvelous and beautiful, will make it to be something great. That's the spirit of Lord God. So, he, so she says, he has light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him. So she's referring back now to the words God called to be Elohim. 4 to 6, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, the father, the king, I say the father, made master of the magicians. He is a master of magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. This is what the men are in the world. They could be either magicians or astrologers or Chaldeans or soothsayers. But she says, the one who has the spirit of Lord God is something far greater than all of these men, as we read in Job 36, 10, and 11, to be something greater than the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field. That is what man is all about. That is the human viewpoint. But we have something high called to be the divine viewpoint. Therefore, now she comes in verse 12, for as much as an excellent spirit. Kobel call eteir, followed by the word ruach. And then what is that word ruach, what we have over here? For the point called to be spirit. And what is that ruach? The word goes to describe for us in simple terms, dear brethren, your head to be renovated as per the demands of Bible doctrine. That's it. That's the word ruach. Itir Ruak. You know what a marvelous things we have over here to learn? If your body has been Kobel Kol, if your body has been really prepared to be for the temple of Christ. In Second Timothy two nineteen we read, move from Arikia, that which is unjust. The result of unjust we looked upon the life of Judas Iscariot, Acts chapter one in verse eighteen. In the same twelve apostles chosen by the Lord God, if Judas Iscariot was also the one being replaced later by Apostle Paul, so should be our life. First we are like Judas Iscariot, but now we should become like Apostle Paul. The man who has been born out of due season. The man who has been having to look upon Christ, having the experience of the third heaven. The man who comes to say that we cannot talk anything about the third heavens except he did it in work. What did he do? He went along to make the disciples to be perfect and complete. He cannot, oh, 
If Judas Iscariot was like Adikias, then Apostle Paul replaced him to be the greatest bond slave of all time, Desmias, followed by the word, followed again, Dulas, Desmias. Again, he said, I am a prisoner to the will of Lord God the Father. Such is our life today. That's the reason you have been given the excellency of the spirit, itiar numa. <laughs> so what does he say now? That itiar spirit will give knowledge. They are, <coughs> the word knowledge is called over here manda. Manda meant to say wisdom. The word manda which has been taken meant to say the knowledge or the things pertaining to everything. So what do you have over here for knowledge? He said to get every thought into captivity for Christ in the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. So this knowledge and then he says you're going to have understanding. Again the word shakel. Your understanding of life is to become disciples, is to grow up into grammatics, is to go and make disciples of all the nations. And then furthermore, we look over here. He said, interpreting of dreams. The word to interpret is called to be pesher. And what does it mean to say? Your viewpoint of life, as per the words of Lord God under the authority of Bible doctrine, interpretation of dreams. The word dreams over here, dear brethren, meant to say kelem. What it is? It has been corresponding to the word kalem, which is called to restore to health. What is going to restore to health? If your wall of fortification is like a disciple program, that's when you're going to restore your life to health. That's when you're going to make up your life to be for the real purpose of the Lord. So interpreting of dreams and then showing of hard sentences, showing meant to say declaration with dogmatic fact. And how do you go for the sentences? Though no matter whatever may be the wall of fortification, you say you're going to become in the standards of getting every thought into captivity for Christ. So it is said to be showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts. The word dissolving over here is called to be share, meant to say the word called to establish a thought process as per the demands of Bible doctrine. Then your doubts, the word doubts over here, it has been called as keter. The meaning of keter over here, dear brethren, it is called to know the problem or the difficulties. So what happens over here in the keter? You have been taken to look in your body from the rising of the sun to the going of the sun, no matter what may be the Kether standards, you just come to establish them as per the word of Lord God. So these are the things, dear brother, on what we have. Kether. So the quality is what it will be if you have been well established in the throne of truth, in the throne of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because the spirit of truth we have been given for us. So the spirit of truth leads you into all truth. So he says, the first thing, excellency of the spirit. If your body has been well prepared to be a grammatist and your body has been well prepared to go and make disciples of all the nations. And then knowledge, second one. And then understanding, the third one. Interpretation of dreams, the fourth one. The fifth one, showing of hard sentences. The sixth one, dissolving of doubts in the characteristics of man. Number six assigned to it. These things have to be replaced in you now in the excellency of the spirit. And now she said, We're found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let the Daniel be called, and I will show you the interpretation. Therefore, dear brethren, in Isaiah chapter 16, in verse number 5, the points recorded over here, in mercy, the word kesed, the unfailing love of God, given to you. Why? So that the throne shall be established. What is the throne? The word throne referring back to become like a scribe. Under any pressure, that which holds up to become like a scribe shall be established. The word established again, to get every thought into captivity for Christ. So, like a scribe, you have been established. And then he shall sit. The word sit over here, dear brethren, it is called to be a sharp, to relaxly dwell. How? If you're having a scribal oriented life, that's the real relaxation in life. Because there is nothing of a force in this heaven that can be against you. So that you can fulfill the word 1 John 4, 4. Greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. That's the point where you fulfill that point. If you're having the scribal authority orientation of life, there is nothing. So he says over here, the point which has been given 
having a scribal authority of life, you are really having a relaxed way of life. Because the one who indwells in is greater than the one who is in this world. So no fear of anything. So what do you do now? He says, in truth, you are going to establish or you shall sit upon in truth. Your thought process in your body has been ruled by the word of Lord God. Therefore, he says, the truth under any pressure for you in your blood. Therefore, in the tabernacle of David. How are you going to become a tabernacle? If you're having a joy of becoming disciple, then it's a tabernacle for David. If you don't have that joy for discipleship program, then you cannot. So this is what the tabernacle of Christ. In mercy he shall be establishing his throne. That is, he wants the people to be grammatious. And from there on he wants to make them to sit in the truth of the tabernacle. So that what? To judge his mishfat, his words, his judgment to, to go on. And the rushing judgment or seeking judgment. So what does he do in seeking judgment? Once again, he wants your body to have a thought process of Bible doctrine. And what will be the result? The result should be immediate change. It's not just knowing, but applying the truth after learning it. That makes the difference. It's like knowing men to say, I cooked your food and kept on the table. Applying is what when you eat it. Applying is when you make it up to be for your life. That's the point over here. So, dear brethren, he says over here in simple terms, hasting righteousness. The word hasting is nothing but for you to apply, to make it up to be as a prompt one, as a skilled one, as mahir, what you can call, meant to say you're baking up your blood to be renovated head. And then how it will be? Applying your righteousness under any pressure of your life. Get every thought into captivity for Christ, from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, walking in the straight path of the Lord. That's why Christ our Lord our God has been born and he establishes his throne upon such truth. And we know very well Christ hasn't been born in your lives. If you, have been, if you have known that Christ has been born in your lives, then you would have that excellency of the Spirit for your body. You would have to realize what a great purpose we have to serve Christ, rather than being still nominal-oriented, conventional, religion-minded Christians celebrating Christmas without Christ in that. Dear brother, life is too short to spend our time in vanity. Because much of the time which has been given for us, it has been given to learn the word of the Lord. The great one thing what he said I desire of the Lord refers back to learn the word of Lord God. Nothing else than that. Apart from the word of Lord God, there is nothing that you can look to be a number one priority. Only the word of Lord God is your life, is your purpose. You want to have a true understanding of the word of Lord God? Then make up your body to be as a grammatias, then go and make disciples of all the nations. That is the real purpose of orientation to the will of Lord God. And without that, if you think you can still live a life of Christmas, without having Christ in it, you are really making up your life a mess. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short, and the responsibility laid on upon our shoulders is too large. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head, and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to turn to Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where with you shall not acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thorn lagan. Herald the word in season, out of sin, because the diamond from my witnesses, where with you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in building Trinity, he followed the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses, so hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. 
So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, lead us to the praise of his glory in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious goodness. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, what a great, marvelous revelation we have, O Lord, for us in Daniel chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. The light, the understanding, and the wisdom which Daniel had, though in the time of past dispensation, how much more we should have in the church age to be in the present dispensation, moment by moment, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The great true life which I have designed for us, O Lord, demands day by day to walk in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. What a pile of wonders we have, O Lord, when we walk and to have the six characters of the Spirit mentioned in Daniel 5 to to us, so that we can have the great understanding to be iteir rua, so that we could be having to realize to this world that we are greater than what Satan could ever think by trampling it down under our feet to fulfill Ezekiel 28 verses 7 through 9. Do section Father, we thank you for this message, and we pray that Lord God the Holy Ghost would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask sovereign Lord. Amen.